Hello everybody, this is Jim Brake. I am doing a small series on 22 ELR um, for our upcoming Iron 22 match, which is in a couple months out at Iron Element, uh, April 13th at 9 a.m. I thought what I'd do is I'd just do a series of videos on what it takes to shoot 22 ELR, some ideas and tips, very basic. Um, but I thought it might help some of you understand how I would go about the process and understand what you need to get the job done, um, uh, particularly out to three, four, five hundred yards um, accurately. Um, I prefer center fire. I prefer heavy center fire, 375, 416, 3, or 33XE, which is in a light division but a, a larger caliber. And so, um, but 22 is enjoyable to shoot in my area where I'm actually located. It's a little easier to shoot and less. Uh, drama with the public type thing um, so anyway this will be number one in the series I don't know how many there'll be um, maybe no one will watch them and I'll stop early I don't know but I thought I would just kind of give some very basics uh, the first and fundamental thing here with ELR is that you're coming from a fixed firing position you're not moving like an NRL or PRS 22 and so you've got your bipods up front and you've got your rear bags and this is the traditional way of shooting. You can shoot in the team with one as your spotter and one as the shooter. Um, the shooter is basically just the monkey behind the trigger and the spotter does most of the work in a team that works together regularly. Um, <clears throat> but basically it starts out with your shooting fundamentals. If you can't hold still while you're breathing, not breathing, while you're pulling the trigger, dry firing, then you basically have some fundamentals that you don't have. Um, I obviously shoot a little different, but when I come down, uh, my gun needs to be on point. It needs to be relaxed. Um, if you're going to use the pistol grip, then you're going to want to hold it. Basically, I, I use the terminology kind of like a small bird. You don't want to grip it too tight that you kill it, and you don't want to grip it too loose that it blows away. Um, the same thing I would say if I was going to uh, show you how to use some knives and things like that. You want to make sure you got a good grip but not too much of a grip because any pressure you put on this moves your point of impact. So you want to do a lot of dry firing. Um, if you have a bolt action 22, I would recommend that, obviously. Uh, but you come down, you prepare yourself, you get into position, you got a good pocket on the, on the rear of the gun, and you just want to let there, just hold right there on your target. Right now I'm at 206 is what I'm looking at and I just want to take some deep breaths and just let the breath out and the gun shouldn't move. Now as I'm talking it's moving here with my chin I shoot my heavier guns a little tighter and then I can see my heartbeat move the scope. Any of that is telling you that you need to train a little more, you need to practice a little more on just your fundamentals. Uh, with your finger control I use straight triggers and I want to be at the bottom of the trigger. I use real small .08 ounces um, because I believe that any any movement whatsoever on the trigger when you have a curved trigger and you pull from up higher uh, two stage triggers some people like some people don't whatever you have you train so that you can get a clean break and it's a surprise you shouldn't know it's coming you should know in general it's coming but it shouldn't be something where you can predict it the heavier the rifle the heavier the impact or the recoil the more likely you're going to flinch. So you need to train constantly. Now this 22 suppressed, especially standard velocity, which is what I shoot. Uh, there's basically nothing, so I should never flinch, but you wanna make sure you, you, you're not flinching, especially if you're out of position. So if I'm over here and I'm all canted like this, then I'm probably gonna be diagonal in some fashion. If I'm pushing with my chin, if I'm pushing with my bag, or in my case, my foot to the right, if you're, you're gripping it from the right, uh, with your finger here in the finger position on this um, on this chassis, uh, any pressure is causing you to potentially pull or push your shot. So you've got to start there. Anything else about ELR, shooting 10 yards or 15 yards really doesn't matter. You've got to start right here. So you get into position and you just hold it. And I like to just breathe, make sure my spine is straight, in your case, you're prone, your spine is in line with the gun, so everything from the bullet and or exiting the gun, the recoil coming through your shoulder, down your spine, and out your feet. Just peacefully shooting. Uh, there have been many times where I lay here 
and I just actually almost kind of doze off. And when I open my eye, I better be in the same position. When I bring my head back, I better be in the same position. Now in my case, I actually bolt the gun and then I have to come back down and be in the same position, which gives me an extraordinary disadvantage because in the case of someone who's shooting, I would teach you or train you to be in this position, pull the trigger, move the bolt with almost no lateral movement in the gun, something very quickly. In my case, I gotta come back down to get into position. So I have to train that constantly. And when I get out of shape, my body, my physique, my, um, my midsection, then I, I struggle with this. I have trouble breathing, I'm pushing, I'm pulling, having all kinds of movement in my gun. So that's the first thing you need to go out and do, or do it in your house. I mean, at one of the matches I went to, I had dry fired 1,000 times. Now, it was a center fire, it was a little different scenario. Um, and I worked my way for 45 days up to 1,000 dry fires in position as if I was shooting so that it became muscle memory to me. And even when I take breaks, I come back down. I'm usually in good position because I've trained myself through physical muscle memory to do so. Anyway, so that's the start. You have to get that into position. And then after that, I want to talk about in my number two video, we're going to talk about what it means to shoot out a distance. How do you even know where you're shooting? A lot of people just go out and they just do some blind holdover, you know, and they're just like, ah, oh, shooting in the wind. Like for example, I have a tailwind today of about 13 mile an hour. I hate shooting in tailwind. I hate shooting tailwinds because they're very unpredictable in how they push your bullet farther than they should. And they also get gusts, which increase the velocity of your round and whatnot. So that's a problem. So that'll be our next video. Forward forever, backward never. Thank you, enjoy.